one of the things that I love about documentary and about journalism is that the more you uh, are curious about the world around you, that even things that seem very normal and very um, boring, if you start asking questions and looking into it, it's almost always an interesting story uh, behind it. And I love that about journalism and documentary. That even if you walked onto the street and just said, you, <laughs> come here, I'm going to start asking you questions, that person has an interesting story. All of us. Hello, it's Barani Chitin Press. My name is Ksenia. My name is Lera. Polina. Kate. Alex. And today we are here with... Risa Sanders, we are. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's start with the basics. Why have you decided to work in film production films, namely documentary films? Um, I grew up watching lots of documentary films and later on in life when I was in college and I discovered a love of film and filmmaking. Um, I, when I was deciding whether to be in a fiction film or documentary film, uh, I decided that I love documentary more because often the truth uh, is stranger than fiction. <laughs> Thank you. What is part what inspires you to create new projects? I think what inspires me is um, being able to tell stories that help people understand their world better or um, inspire them to take action against something that's wrong that needs to be fixed. Uh, do you have your own rules as a screenwriter? Do you force yourself to write every day the necessary number of pages to wait for inspiration? So documentary is a little bit different in that sense. So no, I'm not a writer from the point of view of someone who sits down and writes every day, but I am constantly uh, looking at documentaries, seeing ideas that other people are having and working on research for ideas that I have. I should do it more. <laughs> Which kind of relationships with people on set do you find the most effective during work on film? So um, there always has to be a level of respect uh, with your subject and also with the uh, crew that you're working with. Um, it's, uh, it's a very much a pleasure when you're working with uh, camera people and sound people that um, can uh, take your ideas and make them even better. And as far as with the subjects that you're talking with, um, you have to be able to um, appreciate where they're coming from and what they have to say, uh, I think that is the most helpful. Have you ever been afraid that the audience will not understand the main idea of your film? Is it possible to predict the feedback? Um, it's, not it's not possible always to predict how people will feel. I think that one of the things as a filmmaker you do is that uh, you work on your film for a certain amount of time and then you show it to audiences uh, before it's done so that you can get feedback. And often it's very hard to hear people's criticism of what you what you had thinking is the you know very um, very important to you but that's an important part of the process so that you're sure that the ideas that you're trying to convey are coming through thank you how do you watch a movie as a spectator or a screenwriter um it's impossible for me not to watch them as a filmmaker but i think uh Fiction films, I, I watch them more as a spectator than I do as a filmmaker. Documentary films, uh, there's always a little bit of me that's thinking about how I would have done it differently or something that could have been done better. Um, but I do enjoy watching documentaries. <clears throat> what topics do you think are unfairly rarely covered in the movies? What topics do I think uh, should be covered? Yes. Um, in documentaries, there's uh, a trend happening in the United States right now, which is people telling their own stories from their own perspectives. So um, if, a, like for me, telling the story about Gadget Girls, uh, I bring a unique perspective having been a young girl. And um, I think it's important that those stories be told by people who understand them. It doesn't necessarily mean that 
people can only tell their own stories, but um, but I think it it enriches the um, communication if somebody really understands the subject matter. What were you dreaming of at the beginning of your career, and did they come true? Your dreams. Um, what I was dreaming of is um, still coming true, which is wonderful. Um, it's nice to be even at this point in my career that I am, and I still have things that I am want to achieve and things that I want to do. But uh, I, I do think that I'm very lucky that I've been able to work in documentary for my entire career, um, and uh, that's very special to me. Uh, do you think it is better to understand each area a little or a specific one, but to be a uh, professional? Well, I, d I think that depends on what your job is. I mean, if you're a researcher or a scientist, you're going to understand one area specifically very deeply. Uh, one of the things I love about being a documentary filmmaker is that I get to move from topic to topic and become sort of a little bit of an expert in, um, in each one as I go along. I really love that. Describe your feelings when you got your first robot. What? Um, well, the first time I went was nominated for an award. I did not win. <laughs> and um, awards are important and it's nice to get them. But what's most important is the work and that it, it be seen. So um, I think with the Oscars, you always hear people say, oh, it was an honor to be nominated. Uh, it really is. And uh, winning awards is uh, not the most important thing. Okay. If to imagine that you aren't working in movie making sphere, which job would you have? Um, I think, hmm, uh, I like the idea of being a historian, uh, being able to research a topic and understand it more. I think one of the things of books that I like to read, I love histories that teach us sort of the real story and not just the easy story that was taught to us as children. So I love the more complex and more interesting versions of history. Wow, thank you. Um, have you faced some problems connected with sexism during your work or your study? Um, I don't think there is anything that is um, so obvious that I faced, uh, but there are times when I know that um, more senior uh, filmmakers uh, who are men, it's easier for them to mentor young men and it's easier for them to sort of um, push, put them forward as, uh, you know, young and aspiring filmmakers. So I know that there's a little bit of that that's happened along the way. Um, I think it's more a combination of um, trying to balance work and life. I have two kids, so sometimes I've made choices uh, because I want to be with my kids more, um, which should be the same choices that men are having to make too, but uh, but it is an issue for women as well. It should be less an issue for women, but for right now, it's still more of an issue for women. Uh, in post-Soviet countries, it's still unbelievable for a huge mass of people that uh, women in technical sphere are as good as men. So many young girls who decided to take side job are under pressure. What would you say to this girl to empower them? I wish I had a magic word or something that I could say to empower them. I think that um, it's easy for adults or easy for people who are not uh, involved in that to say, believe in your dreams and believe in your passion and, uh, you know, continue to follow your dreams. Um, I know that that's hard at times. So um, I think the one thing that girls can do, uh, young women can do is to reach out to other uh, people, uh, other young women, but also young men and create a community for themselves uh, that uh, that supports them as they so they have someone that they can talk to when they get frustrated. That's very important. This March Women's History Month is celebrated. Which woman figure inspires you the most? A number of years ago, I started a list 
uh, that I keep on my computer that is uh, the title of the document is Famous Women I Admire. Um, because I found that I didn't really have enough heroes that uh, I was looking up to and thinking of regularly. Um, I think that uh, there's not any one particular woman that I, I think of, but there are several. And I think what is most important that I find is that people who are not only exceptional and sort of um, extraordinary people, but sort of regular people that when they had the opportunity, uh, became uh, very uh, successful. So for me, uh, a person that I'm thinking about, because uh, I'm thinking about making a film about her, is the first woman to become a United States Senator. Uh, and I didn't actually know about her until about five years ago. Um, she's from my state of Arkansas and was elected in 1932 to the United States Senate. And I'd never heard of her. And I think that this is incredible that um, very few people in the United States know who she is. And uh, I, I would very much like to change that. Thank you. Uh, what was the difficult at the beginning of your working parts and uh, when in your opinion it was more difficult for a woman producer to start a profession now or 20 years ago? Um, I think that uh, when I started my career there was a very big uh, interest in documentary that was starting in the United States. So there were a lot of opportunities for uh, both men and women in the field. I was very lucky to be working at a company that when I started there were 13 people at the company and when I left that company five years later there were about 60. So uh, there were lots of opportunities for me. Um, that and that was just very much lucky that I ended up in that situation. I think that it is still a little bit difficult for women uh, in this career. I think that um, you're asking people to give you money to make a project and while documentary is uh, roughly 50% women, um, men tend to get the larger budget projects uh, because I still think there is this prejudice that uh, that men are more uh, trustworthy with larger budgets and so forth and I would like to see that change. Now let's speak about your awarded project America to me. What motivated you to become a part of this project affecting the problems of modern uh, pupils? Sure. Um, I grew up in the <clears throat> I grew up in America in the South, where there is a large African American population, and I've always been uh, interested in um, changing the world and and making uh, things more equal uh, for all American citizens. Uh, this particular documentary was about why, in a community where this high school is, which is very um, progressive. They don't have racist views. They have plenty of money. They don't have any particular problems. Yet the African American students still are not achieving academically at the same level. And um, so the documentary was really sort of talking about systemic racism, which is um, things a part of just uh, not individuals being racist but the system as a whole not really encouraging black students to achieve so that was really the point of the documentary and it was something that I, I deeply am interested and care about during the pre pre preparation for the interview we checked your Facebook page out we noticed that you had posted how much time was spent on the project what did you feel when the project was completed and wasn't it hard to give everything up on the halfway are you talking about the America to me project um, it did take uh, about four years and um, but it was very exciting for years uh, the first year we were doing the filming and then uh, for two years we were editing and um, all <laughs> weaving together the story so um, we shot uh, 1,400 hours of footage um, that we 
edited down to 10 and a half hours of the series. So it was a lot of work and it was very exciting work. So it was, it was very fun to be a part of. Thank you. And thank you for the interview. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.